We are joined by a Miami Heat original, the team's general manager, Andy Ellisberg. And Andy, thanks for stopping in. Always, Eric, for you, anything. <laughs> Let's go back to, to this summer as as you and Pat Riley and the Heat basketball organization built this team and put this particular team together. Take us through the process of building this roster, what it meant for the team and how you did it financially. Well, I think as we as we entered into the summer, you know, we had some big decisions to make. Gordon Dragic was a free agent. Uh, Dwayne Wade was a free agent. Uh, we had just drafted Justice, Justice Winslow. Luol Deng opted into his contract and I think we had to then say, okay, how do you going to build the team together to get to ultimately a 15-man roster um, and continue to add talent. We were also having to deal with the, the specter of the repeater tax this year. We were you know, prepared to be a taxpayer. And then we had an opportunity as we went into and we were able to add you know, Gerald Green and Amari Stoudemire. Well, at that point in time, you're at a 17-man roster. It put us in a position to suddenly have to figure out how to sort of maneuver the roster around. Um, we did that by trading Shabazz Napier and also Zoran Dragic. But as we entered into the season, you know, the emergence of Tyler Johnson really forced his way into a player that he had to play. You know, the opportunities for Mario were not probably the minutes that Mario wanted to have. So we were mindful that, you know, if we had to make a move, we wanted to make a move that got Mario to a good place. And we were able to, to make the move with, with Chalmers and Ennis. And that brought back Stokes and Beno Udri. Um, the next opportunity came right at the trade deadline. Chris is a huge part of our 2013 championship and you know, a forever member of the Miami Heat family. An opportunity came to, to give him a chance to go to a, play, a good playoff team. And we were able to make ma that move, which uh, brought back um, Brian Roberts. And then, uh, you know, right at the deadline, you know, there was an opportunity to make a move with Brian Roberts that would effectively take us out of the tax, we cleanse ourselves from the repeater tax. And so it made sense to kind of make that move and, you know, set up to where we are today. I want to talk to you about being a repeat taxpayer. There's, there's so many sides to it. Here's one of them. By being in position of being a repeat taxpayer, that means you guys have been willing to exceed the cap and pay the tax four out of five years. So obviously the commitment's there. Talk about and educate the fans to why it was important and the benefits of being a non-repeat taxpayer this year and what that's going to open up the franchise for. We've always been willing to be a, a taxpayer, and I think we've always been willing to spend, you know, you know have you know, max level salaries. Um, when the new collective bargaining agreement came into effect in 2011, one of the things that I said when I first read the agreement is this agreement was forced you to make choices, that you couldn't have everything. And one of the things that the repeater tax element brought into is that your payroll was going to, at times you were going to be a taxpayer, but at times you had to sort of cleanse yourself and get under being a taxpayer. You don't want to be in a, in a, in a situation where you're competing with, against people where you're having to spend a significantly higher level just to compete you know, equally and for agency. So when there was an opportunity to sort of cleanse ourselves, to be able to make that move and sort of begin that process again and then set up for the next, you know, period of time. And that's, I think, what fans are most interested in. It's, it's not really about saving money. It's the ability and the flexibility now to spend your money in a wise championship building way. Yeah, I think we're committed to spending money. We have always been shown, if you look at our history of our payrolls, we have been willing to spend money. We have been a taxpayer multiple times, and I sure in the future will be a taxpayer multiple times. So it's not necessarily do you spend money. It's when you spend the money, how you spend the money, where you spend the money. You know, I think if, it was Zoe, if this business of sports was so simple, if you spent more than anyone else, you'd win, that would be a very simple business. It doesn't work that way. It's you have to spend the money wisely and you have to figure out when to spend it. I think the Mickey and Pat and Nick every year have said we want to be a competitive team. And we've made an effort to make sure that we have a competitive team and try to manage the roster and manage the payroll within having a competitive team every year. You have looked back to the past. You've, you've addressed the present. What about the future? Where does the heat stand now as we move toward the summer of 2016 and the free agent summer of 2017? You know, I think if anyone who knows us knows that we're always going to be looking at opportunities. Whatever brings the best players to Miami is the way we're willing to do it. And if it means a trade, we'll do it as a trade. If it means in free agency, we'll do it in free agency or draft. And I think the greatest players of here have all come through different ways. Dwayne Wade has been a draft. Shaquille O'Neal came in through trade. LeBron and Chris were sort of half free agency and half trade. Udonis Haslam and Joel Anthony, who became big parts of championship teams, you know, both came through summer league free agency. We're willing, able, and desire to use every means possible.